Hello, hello. I have a mic with me today because we have some things to talk about. I know it's giving karaoke mic, but I promise I will not be breaking out into song. I feel like there's a topic that we've been dancing around on my channel for so long, but never like really sitting on it and just like marinating in it. And there's been a few comments lately that have reminded me of this. Slow fashion. Basically, I've been sewing on YouTube, making my own clothes for like 10 years now. And through all the like sourcing of materials, drawing up designs, tedious sewing steps, discarding fabric scraps, I've come to grasp more and more just the sheer amount of work that goes into creating a garment, the number of people involved to get a piece of clothing that's just an idea into your hands and having you wear it right now. And that for every little bit of scrap fabric that I throw out, the fashion industry is just discarding tons and tons of off-cut material. Also that we can like look cute or presentable at least and like change things up so we don't feel outdated. With every sewing project I realize it more and at some point it just like kind of becomes like pretty exhausting to think about. I have become just like a bigger and bigger fan of buying less clothes. I know it's kind of counterintuitive because I run a fashion and DIY channel and like if you guys have ever seen a five minute DIY crafting video, you know that a lot of those things are ending up in the junk. But despite all that, I still want to be more strategic with my purchases. I want to simplify the amount of space that getting dressed takes up in my head. Lately, I look at my closet and sometimes it just feels like such a chaotic mess because the clothing reflects so many colors and styles and trends because I have a hard time throwing things away. I want to do something about this and I really believe I'm not alone in this feeling. And I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, but I'm planning on going about this in a data focused approach. So here we are, a data based approach to simplifying your closet. Some of you may see this as a bit of an elephant in the room. When it comes to my closet, she has had a major glow up on the outside. Tomorrow, Alexandra and the team are coming here to make over our bedroom. So I guess this is goodbye. Dan's workstation our bed with throw blanket hooked up to a compression rod ever since us moving in half a year ago. So really looking forward to that being different. This is the entrance to our ensuite bathroom. The makeover is not touching this. However, because we're not allowed to enter our bedroom, we will not be able to use our toilet with our lovely tushy. And over here, not quite sure what's going to land here, but I'm going to be looking at this all the time. I guess this is goodbye. Every one of these details is subject to change, so we will see what happens. If you guys don't know who Alexandra Gator is, please check the description to see her makeovers. She is honestly a fairy godmother, transforming people's homes into beautiful spaces, and she, uh, she made me cry when she showed me this bedroom. I think I suddenly was overcome by the reality of how long it would have taken me and Dan to make this space feel like home for her to like transform it all in one go. <laughs> if you go to watch the bedroom transformation video, maybe like after this video, you will notice there was one thing that I was adamant on keeping. They are also the sponsor of this video. Do you, do you want to take it away? Yes. Like many of you, hopefully, sleep is very important to me. I can't tell you how much harder it is to take care of a baby when you're not well rested. When Alexandra Gator gave us our bedroom makeover, we specifically requested, please don't touch our mattress, our bed frame. They're from Birch Living. We don't want them replaced. We miss them when we travel. I'm gonna bring this over here. Birch Living is a premium mattress in a box company. They make sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made in America and they are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It was important for me to choose a Birch mattress that was made from natural and organic materials because I can sleep easy knowing that there's no harmful off-gassing from the manufacturing process. And in addition to being a better mattress for me, for Dan, for Sagwa, who sometimes sleeps with us, Birch is also committed to being a better mattress for the planet. Throughout the creation of their mattresses, Birch ensures that their materials are produced and harvest sustainably. They now have the Birch Lux mattress. It's a premium upgrade to their original, well-loved Birch natural mattress. We have at our Birch mattress for two years now. We still love it so much. We sleep so well through my pregnancy, postpartum, late nights with baby. The quality of the mattress is just obvious when we compare it to our previous mattress. If you want to check it out with your Birch mattress, you'll get a 100 night sleep trial. You'll also get a 25 year warranty. 
So for all of you that are nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, you will get more than three months to sleep in it, roll around in it, work from home in it. And if you don't love it, Birch will pick it up, you'll get a full refund, all good. The best and easiest part of it all is that Birch delivers right to your door for free also in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself and then each Birch mattress comes with two Eco Rest pillows that we also use. They're made from recycled plastic bottles, yet still breathable and better for the environment. We very much so love our Birch mattress. I think you guys will too if you're looking for a new mattress. Check out Birch. You can click the link in the description or you can go to birchliving.com slash with Wendy. You will get $400 off your mattress plus the two free Eco Rest pillows. Thanks so much Birch Living for sponsoring this video. A slow fashion, in general, is a concept that is the opposite of fast fashion. It refers to a fashion approach that considers the procedures and resources that are needed to create apparel, and generally promotes the purchase of higher quality clothes that will last longer, as well as equitable treatment of people, animals, and the environment involved in the fashion manufacturing process. So where fast fashion says cheap labor, cheap materials, cheap garment construction, sell lots of it, and then just like throw it out when we're done with it. Slow fashion says, let's not exploit garment workers. Let's select materials sustainably. Let's construct garments to last. Let's buy carefully, all with the intention of having as little as possible go to the landfill. Which sounds great, but I do think the rise of fast fashion is completely understandable given the track of industrialization that we've been on. During the late 20th century, fast fashion grew significantly due to improvements in clothing manufacturing, the global supply chain, as well as a dependence on low-cost labor in regions like South to East Asia. I'm sure we've all seen those tags on the shirts that say made in Vietnam, made in Bangladesh. The speed, the low cost, it all fit perfectly with shorter trend cycles in selling more products. And companies like Zara, H&M, Shein, Primark, these are the massive companies that have profited off of fast fashion. All of this has, unfortunately, come at a cost to the environment. The global fashion industry is responsible for about 10% of global carbon emissions every year and fast fashion is a significant contributor of that. So now looking back, taking in the scale of pollution, unethical treatment of garment workers, excess waste, and then even at my personal level just the exhaustion of feeling like I'm always supposed to be buying something new. Consumers are becoming more interested in I guess what I call guilt-free clothing and appreciating more like long-lasting quality. Slow fashion, like it's not free of controversy. As it becomes more popular to be eco-conscious, Capitalism always finds a way to make more money. Many companies make statements about being more eco-conscious and I'm not trying to be like raining on anyone's parade. I do actually believe at a high level, I like to see the conversation, the energy, the the pressure, the direction. But unfortunately, at a practical level, a lot of it can add up to be greenwashing or green sheen. Greenwashing is a form of advertising or marketing spin in which the supposed green benefits are used deceptively to sell more products, help the company kind of distance itself from its more environmentally shady practices, and like in the end, it really just benefits the bottom line more than the planet. For example, this is an often referred to one, but Swedish brand H&M has a conscious choice collection which, what in their words, pieces created with a little extra consideration for the planet. But it has been reported that since 2013, H&M has burned 60 tons of unsold new clothing, and they're not by any means alone in this practice in the fashion industry. There's so much more to untangle here, and I'll include some links in the description if you want to read more. And I also want to be clear, me bringing up slow fashion is not me trying to shame anyone who is dependent on the system that is fast fashion. Like when I see the price tags of items that are slow fashion versus fast fashion, <laughs> It hurts, it's a huge difference. And I also wanna acknowledge minimalism, simplification, as popular as they are, they come loaded with privilege that you have the flexibility and freedom to invest and think about the future instead of just worrying about survival and the now. So with all that said, if you are at the point like me where you want to simplify your wardrobe, you want to own items that you wear and love, you want to vote with your wallet that fast fashion needs to chill, I'm on that journey with you. The actions that I've taken thus far. Sorry, the sunlight keeps changing in here, so maybe this is a little better. Over the years, I have severely limited 
the degree to which I shop fast fashion. I've been trying to thrift or buy secondhand clothes whenever possible. I also sell clothing when I'm finished with them, and with that inherently comes trying to buy stuff that I can tell has resale value. So like, I know it has a long lifespan ahead. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen me do a closet sale here or there. Stay tuned, I'll probably have more in the future. But if I'm shorter on time, I'll also often bring my things to a consignment store. All of which brings me to the next step I'm trying to take. Capsule wardrobes. Is this nothing new? They've appeared in American publications as early as the 1940s. At its core, it's a collection of clothing interchangeable items that can create the maximum number of outfits. I have never attempted a capsule wardrobe, so I did try to look up some tips. They are stick to a color scheme, oh boy, flatter your body shape and complexion, okay, classic shapes and patterns, high quality fabrics that age well. I like that one. Basically anything that doesn't meet most of these criteria is essentially not the best use of your hard-earned money. If you're gonna spend your money on an item that you only wear a few times, that's low ROI and we can do better. Okay, we're getting we're getting down to business. A friend of mine showed me she was using this app. A, a closet? A closet. This is not sponsored, it's a free app, but basically you input all of your clothes, it'll assemble outfits for you, help you live out your clueless Cher Horowitz fantasies. But the part I'm most interested in is the data. As you use the app, it will calculate how well you're using your closet, the items you don't use as much, the items with the highest cost per wear. To me, this is like the fairest, most scientific way I could approach assessing which of my clothing items I probably should part with, but on top of that, what I should buy that would be the most efficient addition to the wardrobe so I just don't feel tempted to like buy random things. My friend said apparently it's very easy to set up your wardrobe. I, I personally I feel a little bit intimidated because it's a lot of pictures. I'm gonna give this a go. I want you guys to guess in the comments how long you feel like it would take you to do something like this. I'm going to guess one hour? Two. This thing even has the weather. Alrighty, I'm hitting the plus sign. Add clothes. Ooh, I gotta take a lot of pictures. Okay, I did it. I did end up taking an hour to just do the tops. <laughs> I think the whole thing took three hours. I retook some photos when I realized some clothes looked much cuter lying on the ground than on a hanger. And then on top of that, I remembered this whole box of clothes that I had put away when I was really starting to show for pregnancy, mostly pants. I had no idea if I would get to wear them again and I do still fit them. So brought those back out. The feature I'm second most interested in, outfit recommendations. Their ideas based on the weather, occasion, specific colors in your wardrobe. I wanna try some of these. First up, let's try. A pop of yellow. I don't know if I 100% love this outfit because this white shirt really toes the line of like becoming a lab coat. Okay, let's find another one. I don't think I would have ever put this outfit together. This one was suggested as let's try a white blouse. I'll think about this one. Alrighty, what else you got? Touch of black. I feel like this one was heading in a good direction, but the one thing the app can't really take into account is like the weight or texture of things. Like this turtleneck is way too heavy for this lighter dress. The silhouette from far away is like, okay. But it does give me good ideas because then I could just do the same thing with a thinner turtleneck. Well, that was fun. Every day I've been logging the outfits. <laughs> so cool. Hello. They've got two types of stats, utilization, which talks about how much I've been wearing each of the clothing items, but then clothing stats kind of breaks down the composition of my wardrobe. I did skip underwear, socks, shoes, bags, thick winter coats, and pajamas. Just don't really feel like they're as critical to this app. According to the app, most of my items are tops, which makes sense because while I was pregnant, I had very little desire to buy bottoms because it felt like that was an area where there was a lot of change. And two, when I go thrift shopping, it's just easier and more inviting to try on tops than to try on bottoms. You actually have to go to the change room, all that jazz, and maybe also because of YouTube. You guys mostly see the top half of my body. My takeaway from this stat is I think I should be more picky and really check myself before I get more tops. In terms of brands, I'm gonna take a moment to celebrate. The brand I buy from most is thrifted. And then in second place, it's stuff that I made, 
which is also crazy. Third place is Aritzia. I mean, like, I put every sub brand under Aritzia. I just called them all Aritzia to make my life easier. I'm just gonna call that a good case for wardrobe basics. And then in terms of color, I have the most black items in my closet. I don't know if anyone can really escape that though. In the world of data collection, the popular saying is garbage in, garbage out. You gotta put in clear, consistent, specific data in order to get anything that's worth analyzing and gaining insights from. My plan is keep logging in this app until at least the end of the year. That way I avoid the holiday rush temptation craziness and two, actually have enough information inside this app to start thinking about things. Already between this app and sample modern day capsule wardrobe collections, I can tell one thing that would further unlock the potential of my wardrobe would just be like a nice fitted white color shirt. I can also tell that I keep gravitating towards outfits with very simple color combinations and so maybe having a colorful wardrobe is like a bit too aspirational for me. Generally a capsule wardrobe is easiest when all the colors are cohesive. If any of you guys have tried this app and have more tips, please do let me know. I just really wanted to open up the conversation of slow fashion. I would love to hear any of your thoughts on this and I feel like there's something in the air because a lot of other YouTubers that I love to follow have also been talking about the dangers and real cost of fast fashion. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna be in the know on any of my closet sales and I hope we can continue this conversation about being more mindful of the clothes that we wear and the impact that the fashion industry has on our planet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.